Okay, I've got several brittle stars. This is one of them, or at least part of one of them. This is a white brittle star. And this is just one of its legs. Uh, he's searching around for food. And the thing is about four feet wide. I've had the thing about four years now. And this is just one leg. <laughs> and it's huge. I mean, the thing is just... It's not big in diameter. The oral disc is maybe, you know, the size of a quarter or a half dollar or something. But the legs, I mean, just tremendously long. Maybe I can see the rest of it. I'll see the rest of them. This is the uh, red lip blenny. Up amongst the pumps. This is one of the uh, white white sand uh, starfish. I have three, and they pretty much suck all the huh, all the life out of the sand. Uh, but they do uh, keep the sand clean. I would not recommend having more than uh, than one in say a 120 gallon tank because um, they will uh, will wreak havoc with the life forms in the sand itself you know, so they they have the advantage of, of keeping the sand clean on the top but it, they'll also eat the worms and stuff inside the sand you know, the live sand so This is the, uh, there he goes, <laughs> the psychedelic fish. This is another one of the, the sand stars, the white sand stars. He's, uh, he's up in the bay here. Uh, I was kind of reserving this spot to put like a, a 20 inch or 16 to 20 inch uh, giga clam. And fit it right in this area here. And I'm trying to contact some of the mail order houses to see if I couldn't get one real nice. Uh, and nobody has responded back uh, with too much enthusiasm. Things weigh about 50 pounds for shipping. And here's the, here's the other one. So that's two of them. I'm going to show you some of this uh, bushy calcifying uh, algae. I don't know how well I, how well I can show it to you here, but it's a, basically a bush. Kind of a brown-purple bush. This is that uh, starfish again. Let's see if we can't get a better shot of that clam. That's the one that uh, Formosa tipped over. Now this is interesting. This is uh, a decorator crab. We'll probably be able to get a better shot of him at night. It's kind of rare to see him out during the day. I can't get a good picture of him here. He's kind of far back. He's a good uh, three inches across. He's fairly big. And uh, feeding must have brought him out. You see this little patch of green here. Um, that's a piece of macroalgae stuck on himself. Right there. Anyway, cute animal. Okay, this is the green emerald crab, and he's eating Bologna, which is why I got him. Let's see if I can get a close-up of him here. 
guess I can't get to stand back a ways. Um, you can see the claw there. He's, he's picking up a piece of the bologna. Okay, let's just watch him eat a little bit. He's, uh, if you look to his right, you see all the little bubbles? In fact, he's sitting on a fairly big one right in the front there, in the lower front there. And uh, so he's eating the bubble algae, that's what he's for. Like I said, I put three of them in. I only got a few clusters of the bubble algae, but I don't want them to spread. Uh, this isn't a wonderful picture. He's small and he's way back. I'm trying to shoot through three feet of uh, three feet of water. Plus, he's in his shade. So, but you can see the claw there, and uh, he's munching away. Well, for sure this tank is a uh, is a real delight to watch. There's always things going on. It's really neat to watch when a small fish comes by and he throws his pincers out in a threatening gesture. This is some kind of a filter feeder, real white, branchy like. At first I assumed it was some kind of sponge, but maybe it maybe it isn't. But it's definitely a filter feeder.
This is one of many uh, hermit crabs. And he has stolen a, uh, a turbo snail shell to make it its home. You see there's a second one off here to the to the left. Looks like he's disappeared. Anyway, a lot of animals come out during feeding, which you don't normally see too much of. Now the chorus that you see there, uh, you'll notice he was uh, pretty dark looking. Let's see if I can get a shot of him here uh, as he picks through the rocks. This is not what you'd normally expect from a chorus. Uh, normally what you buy are uh, clown choruses and they're quite red. And uh, this one is a Formosa chorus which is normally a, a deep orange brown with uh, with dramatic white stripe. I don't see him there anymore. Um, I mean, this one's more than just a juvenile. He's, he's quite old. He's, uh, he's approaching adulthood. Uh, let's see if I can get a better picture of him. Uh, this one, he's, he's because he's approaching adulthood, he's sort of uh, an adolescent, and his colors aren't right. He isn't uh, orange or red or anything. He's just black with some white stripes. And you see him turning that rock over? Very strong. You can flip that clam right up into the clam you see here. Flips it right up into the air. Or I should say into the water. But anyway, he's uh, just now beginning to get some adult colors, a little bit of orange, just starting to show on his sidewall. Uh, although it's hard to see with this lighting, but uh, probably within six months to a year, you'll have a lot more color. Anyway, the rocks don't look uh, all that impressive, but they they actually are. This is all deep dark purple, all completely covered uh, coral and algae. The problem is those 10K lights tend to bleach or wash it out looking. Um, see if I can get a... See, this is an area that's a little more shaded. You can see the coloring here. It's, it's totally covered. Virtually no areas of exposed calcium carbonate. And uh, it is a combination of uh, um, deep purple, light purple, and deep pink colors. I'm trying to show you the sponge again. You see the uh, See, the sponge is purple, although it may not look it in this, in this color, but it's uh, the color of this light. But you can see these various vascular uh, structures 